yesterday. And Sue actually is on, on that course, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna also switch camera. That's it, so we've got a better view, there we go. Okay, so if there's any problems with sound, do, um, do say something. I'm just gonna take this. Okay, so we're going to start uh, start in the kneeling position. So if uh, if kneeling, if sitting on the feet is uncomfortable, then you can bring the floor up with a couple of cushions or blocks to, to be a bit easier on the ankle. So I'll just show that. I mean, this is a fairly straightforward uh, posture, vidasana. Okay. So yeah, it's good to have some padding underneath the knee. Hi, Suryadashini, somewhere in the darkness there. <laughs> so we're gonna, what we're gonna do, yeah, I wanna build up to the chair practice, which is basically a supported shoulder stand. I mean, if you could go into a, a full shoulder balance sequence as well, um, if you're feeling more up for it, but I, I, it's quite an interesting practice to do because it's got a restful quality to it. But I'm going to do a little bit of preparation to prepare the upper back and the shoulders. So I'd like you to come into uh, kneeling with the knees together. And actually, most of this work on the shoulders, I don't think there'll be anybody, any surprises here. So We'll spend a moment just to close the eyes and center ourselves. So I'd like you to start to connect with the whole body now. Whole body awareness. Gently growing your spine. And also getting a sense of your mood, this point in the day. You could even ask yourself, how am I? And in your own mind, dedicating this space now to your practice, asana practice. So we're going to do right up till quarter past the hour. We'll do posture work and then uh, I'll let you set up shavasana, as it, as it were, in your own time. Okay. So from here, we're gonna extend the arms out, reaching out. So this, this is a, a really a warming up exercise. So I want you to bring the tips of the sh fingers to the shoulders. And then we start off with a very gentle, small movement in one direction. Okay, we start off uh, with a circle, going forwards, going back, but in a circular action. And then we start to increase circle connecting with your breathing so this can become bigger and bigger each time feeling your way into the shoulders eventually the elbows touching in front of you and reaching back so you can make that a more exaggerated movement. Connecting with the specific sensations around the shoulders, the upper back, the neck and then we'll start to reduce the circle coming back to a smaller circle now and then changing direction so it's the same starting off small changing direction building up a little bit bigger each time
So maybe this feels somehow different, different sounds emanating from the shoulders. And again, the elbows touching in front. They're not going to touch behind you, but you can open the chest and take the elbows back. Exploring going forwards and back, but also up and down. So it becomes quite, it can be quite a big movement. And again, reducing now the circle, coming back round slowly. And then just still just releasing the arms. And then bringing the hands into prayer position, interlace your fingers and push the palms away on the exhale. On the inhale, we're going to extend the arms up long through the waist, through the upper back, through the shoulders, squeezing the elbows in. Moving into Parvasana, extending through from the sitting bones, the palms, growing the spine. Noticing which of your index fingers is on top of the other. And then inhale, we're going to wing out the arms and re-interlace the fingers with the other index finger on top. Exhale, pushing the arms forwards. Inhale, extend up. And connecting so it might it will help for probably from time to time just to close your eyes and really feel into your body in some ways the the video stream is there just to help clarify any details if you've got a doubt going on but if you can taking your attention as fully as you can into your own body Elbows are squeezing in here, pushing the palms up, and breathing. Feeling length from the sitting bones, just so if you can just soften maybe slightly the lumbar area, so we're not pushing the chest forwards. That allow the lumbar area to be quiet. Reaching the elbows in and release. Elbows wide, hands wide. And then we're going to come off the legs for a moment. So I'd suggest you just stretch one leg at a time. <clears throat> Open out the backs of the knees. Okay. So I imagine for most of you, this will be fine. So we're going to sit with the feet forwards. So we're going to actually do the full uh, Gumu Kasana. So the legs are going to do shoelace. Okay. So you wrap one leg up on top of the other. So my top leg is my right leg. So usually what I do with this pose, I don't think it matters too much but I'm going to bring my right hand around the back of the body. So maybe I should have said this, but it might be helpful to have a strap at hand. Yeah. For this pose. And then left arm goes up and then we see if we can connect the fingertips at the back of the body. So yeah, I'm just discovering it would be good to have a strap. So with the strap, placing it over the shoulder, so it's at hand. Okay. And yeah, oh, that's interesting. So 
using a strap, you're just gently engaging your top elbow up, bottom elbow down. And we're growing the spine, allowing our weight to sink into the sitting but This is a really quite intense pose, given that we're working the shoulders as well as the hips. We'll just let this pose uh, soak down into the body. So if it's really intense, just back off. Yeah. So I'm noticing my right shoulder for one reason or another is a bit tighter today. Growing the spine, a sense of center. It's it's it can be uh, a meditative pose, Gomukhasana. So it's one of these really uh, archetypal yoga poses. It appears in the early texts like Hatha Yoga, Padivika, Karanda Samhita. So we're encouraging the upper back to lengthen. The sense of lengthening through the upper back. The, the position of the hands helps to create a sense of lengthening, extension through the upper back. Okay, and then releasing. Well, for a moment, release the arms down, release the legs, and we entwine. Let's see how this is with the strap on the other side. So you place the strap over the shoulder can be helpful. So the left arm, I'm taking my left arm in the back. So it's, it's helpful to take the, the arm, the, the down arm back first because you can then use your other arm to, to encourage that shoulder in, the elbow in, reaching up with the opposite arm interlacing breathing there letting the sitting bones evenly sink down weight towards the front edge of the sitting bones noticing the difference between the two sides uh, Okay, yeah, noticing any difference between the arrangement of the arms now in terms of your flexibility or lack of or, or reduced flexibility on this side. So we're working at an edge of practice which is just enough challenging so it doesn't feel like it's uh, overly challenging so we're just creating more tension. So it can be useful to back off sometimes. So we need to learn how to make less effort or making a balanced effort. Sometimes we need to make more effort. So again, suggesting you close the eyes for a few breaths. Connect with the breath. Three more breaths here. Again, looking for that extension through the upper back. Releasing the strap, releasing the fingers, extending out. 
discarding the support and unraveling the legs. Again, we'll come round to opening the backs of the legs one by one. Okay. Okay, and then from here, so we're going to do two versions of quarter dog. So the first one, it's got a twisting element to it. So I'm going to bring my, so I'm in all fours. So I'm going to bring my right arm towards you, towards the camera, and then rest the side, the right side of the head on the floor and the right outer arm on the floor. And then I'm going to bring my left hand out to help support and then step out my left foot so I can throw more weight into the outer right shoulder. So that's the intention, okay? So it's sometimes called thread the needle pose. It's like a version of thread the needle. So confusingly, thread the needle gets described as the supine half lotus as well. And then depending on your neck, your upper back, you can also take the left arm up. So we introduce more of a twist. Um, yeah, you just be careful in terms of checking on the screen what's happening. The intention is to have weight going into, it's like the, the deltoid area of the upper arm, just the outer upper arm. A yin style pose. We're not going to stay for that long. Exhale, unwinding, carefully coming round <clears throat> to all fours. I'm going to just change my direction. So I'm now threading the left arm underneath. So I'm bringing the side of the head to the floor and the outer left shoulder. And then I'm taking my right hand towards my left hand and my right foot out. So it throws more weight into the left outer shoulder. And then I can turn, possibly. This is sometimes called the outrigger pose. This is a Paul Grilly pose. Slightly quirky. But it works into the area where the deltoids uh, run off the neck. And it can feel good for the upper back. There's an element of flexion and twist at the same time. But be very gentle with your neck. And you could do that to three levels. So this is the full level is taking the top arm out, but you could bring the top arm down. And you can even bring the leg down. So you're just taking weight very gently into the side of the head and the shoulder. So we'll bring the arm down. Bring the leg down and then carefully unwind very gently. Coming into all fours now <clears throat> and taking cat cow two or three times, exhaling, arching through the upper back, emphasizing more the upper back, inhaling, lengthening the, as it were, the chest forwards, sternum forwards, two or three times. Coming back to all fours, so the uh, another qu quarter dog version. Just try demonstrating this way. So we're going to cross. I'm going to cross my right forearm. Uh, it's parallel to the short edge of my mat. Lengthen the left arm forwards, and then swing the hips back and look underneath the right forearm. Okay, is that clear? I just described that again. So I'm folding my right forearm down left forearm forwards, turning to look underneath my right. It's like I'm looking underneath the right upper arm area. The hips go back a little bit. The knees, I find it's helpful to take the knees a bit wider than the hips for a sense, more sense of stability. 
And you've got weight then going into the area around the shoulder blade, the sense of traction in the armpit area and around the shoulder blade. Again, it works into, it feels to me like it works, the deltoids. So I'm noticing my deltoids are really tight, probably something to do with splitting logs this morning. Okay. So here, yeah, see if you can allow the chest to sink down. But if you feel like it's pulling on the lumbar, then draw the belly in. Draw the belly in. So it's gentler on the lower back. Okay, it really depends on your lower back, how much you allow yourself to sink. From there on an inhale, coming into all fours again. Briefly coming into the cat stretch. And cow. <clears throat> <clears throat> and back to cat. Back to all fours and then we now cross with the left forearm, right forearm forwards. Looking underneath the left forearm or left upper arm. So I'm turning the side of the head onto the floor. So this is quarter dog version two, or the second version. That is to feel work in the upper back, upper shoulders, outer shoulders, outer upper arms, side of the neck. A minute or two is fine in that pose. Allowing the chest to sink down and watching your, your lower back. Connecting with your breath. And following the next inhale into all fours. And then from here, I'd like us to now take a dog pose, okay? So um, take a dog pose, slightly more active pose. So bearing in mind that your weight can go towards, it's going to be helpful to allow your weight to go more towards the Middle finger to the little finger, middle finger to little finger. We do try and keep the index finger base down, but not excessively. And <clears throat> try lining up upper arms or the, the ears with the upper arms. Okay, and then release down for a moment. Just take that briefly. Sit back on the feet, take a pause. So I did want to do a little bit of warming work which involves the upper back so we'll come back into uh it's fairly simple i'll come back into all fours <clears throat> come back up into the dog pose we're going to take the high plank uh five times so with the high plank what we're doing is we're swinging forwards to kind of well to make a line between shoulders hips and ankles and on the exhale we swing back into dog pose. So we'll take this five times on your own breath, inhaling. Sense of long from pubic bone to the throat. Exhale back. Coming back into dog pose, from dog pose, inhaling into all fours. And then just take a pause. Again, sitting back on the feet, 
Take a pause there, rest the arms onto your lap, recentering around your breath and the spine, growing the spine. Releasing around your shoulders. Okay, and then taking that one more time. Okay, so five uh, high planks from dog pose. Inhaling into the high plank shape. This time when we come into the fifth plank, or now if you want, we'll hold the plank for a few breaths, okay? So what we don't wanna do is let the hips drop too strongly. So it's, it's better to guard against that by lifting the hips slightly higher. So we're not, we're not sinking into the lower back. Uh, so this does tone the upper arms, the whole of the front of the body. When you're ready, dropping down to the knees and again, sit back. We'll just sit back onto the feet, releasing the hands into the lap, coming into uh, a sitting, kneeling position. Releasing from the outer shoulders down to the elbows. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna float the arms up in front of you. And <clears throat> so just, just check it's all right on the ankles. If it's not, then just take a moment to bring some support underneath the sitting bones. So the arms are floating in front of us. And we're gonna cross one of the elbows into the nook of the other elbow. Yeah, so Guru Dasana arms and i'm going to float the elbows to about shoulder height and float the forearms away from us so they're becoming perpendicular to the floor again a sense of poise in the pose sustaining allow the shoulder blades to move down the back This does work again into the deltoids, our outer arms, but also helps to create a sense of space between the shoulder blades, which are the rhomboids, right? Okay, and then releasing the arms down, releasing the arms down. Float the arms, if you can, out to the sides, up, and allow them to drop forwards again. We're bringing the other elbow. If you can, wrapping the elbows or wrapping the forearms as much as is possible. Palms coming together. Well, in reality, it's more like the fingertips touch into the palm of the opposite hand. Again, this is like a classical yoga pose. Quite, quite powerful, really, if you, if you allow it to as it were, sink in, seep in to the upper back, shoulders. So the elbows are lifting more or less to the same height as the shoulders and then the forearms moving away from you. So they become parallel to the front of the body or perpendicular to the floor. So you get that sense of leverage through the shoulder joint. Shoulders dropping away from the ears.
and then releasing the arms down. We're going to wing the arms out to the side, float the arms up, float them down in front of you and allow them to drop back into your, your hands to drop back into your lap for a moment. A moment to feel again the spine in the vertical, growing your spine. Feeling what's happening around the shoulders. Okay, so yeah, let's do this. So we're, we're going to bring the chair, uh, I'm going to use it for a different pose to begin with. Uh, it's a shoulder opener. So I want you to bring the chair in front of us, just kind of at one end of the mat. And let's see. yeah, depending on if it's a really hard edge chair or not, that's that's up to you. But you're gonna prop prop the elbows. So actually I'm gonna put a block. The wooden chair I've got here. So I'm gonna put a block onto the edge of the chair. And then I'm gonna walk the knees back. And I'm going to support also the forehead on the edge of the chair or on, in this case, on the block. And allow, well, uh, um, the upper body to sink, but not too much. So I'm not collapsing down here. Uh, you should feel something happening in around the shoulders here. But my head is supported with this first version, okay. So the hands are in the prayer position. Again, guarding against collapsing the lumbar area. So it may be helpful to roll the pelvis back a little bit. Checking in on your knees, that it feels okay on the knees. You could put padding under the knees if it's not good there. So my elbows, are not too wide. In fact, as in a forearm balance, I quite like to have the elbows quite narrow here. It is more effective in terms of working into the, sh the shoulder joint. Okay, then from there, we're going to walk or swing forward carefully. Take a pause. You can sit back onto the feet, relax the hands into your lap again. <clears throat> okay, this the second visit to this pose. We're going to allow the head to come through the upper arms, okay? So it's going to be more intense. So just take your time to come into this. If you can, you let your head hang through. And again, not overly collapsing into the chest, okay? This really like drags on the underarms, similar to what we were doing in the quarter dog, actually. And similar to what we've done, I think a couple of weeks ago where we used a pile of bricks to get a similar effect. So here we're using a chair. Great. So breathing into this is quite, probably quite a strong set of sensations there around the shoulder blades or the upper arms, underarms. So I can also feel that into my lower back. Okay, so to Reduce sensation in the lower back. You can roll the pelvis back to have the, the lower back more neutral. Connecting with your breathing. So if we can stay here a little bit longer. If it's too intense, do feel free to come out. I guess we'll, take, we'll stay another five breaths here.
when you're ready, so coming out really slowly, really gently. Going to swing forwards and take a pause, sitting back onto the heels if you can, and relax or release the hands into the lap. Once again, growing through your upper spine, through the neck to the crown. Being aware of the effect of that pose, shoulder hang over the chair. Okay, so from here, so this is, yeah, this is where it could get like fun. So we're going to see if we can, so I sent you this photo this morning. I mean, I was playing with it a little bit this morning and there is a real danger. You can kind of fly off the chair, okay? So um, be careful, okay? Um, so it's, what we're gonna do is set ourselves up for doing shoulder balance over the chair. And uh, I've got two bricks down here on the floor because um, I want my shoulders to rest on the bricks and my head onto the floor, okay? Now, on top of these bricks, I could also put a blanket like, a, like we usually do with the shoulder stand set up, but we've just got two bricks. So you could likewise use you see, I've got a, a folded blanket there. If you haven't got bricks, then you could put a blanket, folded blanket up there. Then what you want to be aware of is that the bricks are not too close to the chair. Okay. So this is where, <laughs> like adjusting when you're actually in the pose can be really tricky. Okay. So actually, because you've got to bear in mind that your sacrum is going to be on the edge of the chair. And then you've got the curve of your spine as you come down to the floor. So your head is going to be out here, somewhere away from the chair. Your shoulders on the support and your sacrum pelvis on the chair itself. Also, you could use a bolster. So just so you know that, you get instead of using bricks and a blanket you could have a bolster okay but it depends on the bolster and the fun bit is getting in so i don't think there's an easy way of doing this really so you need to sit on the chair and then as it were drop back so of course there's a danger the whole lot can come piling towards you so and once, yeah, once you're up on the chair, you might think, oh, actually, I need a bit more space so I can move the chair away. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to use a, another blanket on the edge of the chair. Find one. Okay. So I'll just give you a few moments to set yourselves up. Okay, so I'm gonna use my two bricks with a bit of a, my mat folded to give support for the shoulders. And then for the chair itself, I've got a blanket. And then we swing the legs up. So this is the fun bit. Um, how do you get down? So it's not easier. You need to be careful with the chair, but you're gonna lower yourself down. And hopefully the whole lot doesn't come towards you, okay? So when you're ready, I suggest you set up. So you, 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 once you're in, it's quite difficult to adjust the position of the chair. Coming down is easy because you just slide off your support. But I suggest you don't look at the screen once you're into the position. And you want to try to hook the, as it were, the pelvis, that the edge of the pelvis is resting on the edge of the chair. And if you can, you take your arms through and hold the chair. So you could either hold the legs or the cross pieces, depending on the chair that you've got. And we set ourselves up into this. And the legs 
slightly active, resting on the back uh, of the chair. Shoulders are on the bricks. So it's, it's a back bend at this stage, gentle back bend, and it's a shoulder stand. So one of the benefits of shoulder stand is your weight bearing onto tops of the shoulders. So it actually does strengthen around the upper back as well as create a sense of space there. Okay, so the, the danger is, is, as we always say with shoulder stand, don't turn the head. So I really would appreciate if you're really careful with that, okay? So uh, like an ideal chair, you can actually get hold of the back legs. You kind of reach through or reach around and that gives a sense of uh, support through the arms. So once we've got that set up, so I'm just going to do what I said not to do. See how people are getting on. Yeah, really careful not to turn the head. So we're going to float the legs up to the vertical. So this is a bit like doing the shoulder stand over bricks, but now obviously the pelvis is higher. So you float the legs. So they're balancing more or less over the pelvis. Okay, so it's a little bit more weight going into the shoulders, but you've still got the advantage of the chair there. In terms of supporting the uh, pelvis and the leg weight. Okay, so weight is going in from the legs down into the back of the pelvis, into the chair, to the edge of the chair, and also into the shoulders. From here, we can also do a little bit of leg work. So depending on your uh, flexibility, so you might want to take your right leg back to the back edge of the chair and the left leg can come over the head. Probably not going to come that far, but you're going to bring a, introduce a leg stretch into the back of the left leg. So I've got my, uh, my pelvis is still supported on the edge of the chair. I've got my right leg going back towards the back of the chair. And I'm allowing weight to move through. Oops, yeah, that's the danger, the whole lot can fall away. Mm. So I've got gravity going through the back of the left leg. So we'll take the left leg back up and over, back into the initial position. And do the same with the right leg. So I'm just gonna go through this. I mean, whether you follow me all the way through, that's another thing. But you can always check back on the sequence, okay? And try, we're spending too long up on the shoulders, not good for your neck, then do come down. And the way to come down is fairly straightforward. You just move away from the chair, sliding off and lower your pelvis down. Okay, now both legs up to the vertical again. Okay. And we can do here uh, a couple more things. Okay, so Pajva. So we keep the left leg pointing towards the ceiling and then the right leg goes out to the side, okay? Goes out to the side, as much as the flexibility of pelvis allows. And then back up to center. And then you keep the right foot fixed on the ceiling, as it were, and the left leg goes out to the side. Still keeping the pelvis supported. So I've got a wall in the way here. And then back up to center.
hopefully your chair is not sliding away from it. So you can, from time to time, bring it up towards half shoulder button to bring the chair more in towards you. And then one more thing is to so bring the soles of the feet together uh, and then rest the outer edges of the feet on the back of the chair. And the, yeah, the back of the chair. Okay, so the outer feet. So you're like an inverted Sutta uh, Bara Konasana. Obviously, you can see you, there's a lot of kind of faith here in the chair. Okay, so it's advisable to use sturdy chairs. Okay, because you really wouldn't want the chair collapsing under your weight. This chair, I'm just beginning to notice. <laughs> Somewhat rickety it's from the dining room. Suryavada. Okay. And then once again, extend the legs out. First position. We started off in. And then we're going to think about coming down. Okay. So to come down, you can bring your feet down onto the chair itself as much as that. Start to move the chair away from you or slide off your support, just allowing yourself to come down towards the floor. Like lowering yourself down gracefully. You can then bring the backs of the legs onto the seat of the chair. And then we can bring the support out that was underneath the shoulders. So you're coming into a flat back position. And um, we'll have a pause here where we're just resting with the legs on the back of the chair, the back of the calves on the chair, and the back onto the floor itself. Breathing now. Okay, so from there, bring your knees towards you, rolling to one side. Hopefully, I might ask you a bit later on how you got on with that. So, getting the floor space clear again. Move the chair away. <clears throat> okay. I'd like you to come back into semi-supine. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a kind of wind down sequence now. So uh, I'd like you to bring your hands onto your knees. And eight or ten times we're going to take a panasana. So as you exhale, you float the knees towards you. And as you inhale, you float the knees away from you. And we'll do that eight or ten times. Very gentle movement. So obviously with that chair practice, the idea is that it's actually restful. So uh, as I said, it really depends on the setup, the quality of the chair and not being stressed out uh, by the chair or by what's going on in your neck and shoulders. So you do need to set it up quite carefully. So releasing towards you the legs on the exhale, away from you on the inhale. And then from there, releasing the soles of feet to the floor, I like to take the arms out into a T shape and take the feet as wide as your mat. 
if not a little bit wider than your mat. Okay, so what we're going to do is we exhale, we swing the pelvis to one side, the legs follow, and the head goes in the opposite direction. And as we inhale, you swing back to the center line, knees to the center, head to the center, exhale to the opposite side. Inhale into center, exhale across. So the head does the opposite to the pelvis. And we'll do that again eight or 10 times total, four or five times on each side. If you can work it move, moving from the breath on an inhale to center, exhale. To the side. Inhale, coming back into center and now interlacing your fingers behind the head and extend down through your legs. Bring the inner edge of the feet together and lengthen through the whole body here from the crown to the soles of the feet. So we're going to do what's called the hip balance. As you exhale, you just pick up one leg and look down. So this will create a sense of tone through the front of the body. And as you inhale, rest the head back down and switch sides. So exhale, picking up the opposite foot. You're only lifting about a foot off the floor. Inhale, back to the floor and switching sides. Both legs are in a sense firm and straight. And you're only lifting about the foot length off the floor. So your heel comes towards the toe height of the opposite foot. So we're emphasizing a sense of integrity through the whole length of your body. From the crown through to the soles of the feet. Exhaling to come up, inhaling to go down. Four or five cycles on each side. Alternating between left and right. And coming back into stillness, back into semi-supine. And from here, floating the knees towards you. So if you can, I'd like you to bring your right forearm around the back of the thighs. If that's not gonna work, you can bring the right, form, right forearm onto the top of the knees. But if you can, behind the knees. And then we take ourselves into a twist onto the right side. So it's fine to have, not have the arm wrapped. What we do want is both shoulders down and the neck feeling neutral. So no strain in the neck. So actually for me, it's more helpful to look straight up towards the ceiling. Once I'm looking up, I can close the eyes. You could turn the head in the opposite direction of the legs. See how that feels. Supine twist. To 
taking a few breaths here, really allowing your body to sink into the floor. Inhale, floating one leg up to center, the other leg. See if you can wrap a forearm on the other side and switch sides. Again, taking the head or having the head centered or turning to the side. What's important here is the shoulder blades down. So uh, a gentler version of this would be to unwrap the arm, have the arm <clears throat> resting on top of the legs rather than underneath the legs. So I'll let you uh, decide there. Again, a few breaths, four or five breaths, surrendering to the floor, your body weight, releasing around the shoulders, the neck. Once again, floating uh, one leg to center, the other leg to center, rolling around one side. Okay, so we're gonna do one more pose. This is quite an intense pose, but I wanted to finish with uh, an intense uh, pose, <clears throat> which is, um, yeah, it's one of these poses, I'm not sure what to know how to name it, but it's uh, involves crossing the arms. You, you, you would have done this with me before at some point, but you cross the arms underneath you, okay? So what we do is we come down onto the elbows with the arms. Let me just show you this way on. So the arms go out to the sides. Yeah, can you see that? They're going out to the side. And then I'm going to move the hands away from each other as I go down. So getting in is fairly easy, but coming out is more tricky. But you can just roll out, actually. So you lower yourself over your arms. The idea is to bring the, the belly down and even allow. So the forehead, yeah, might want to rest it onto something. <clears throat> not necessarily going to get down to the floor so the idea is to get this really intense stretch in the outer arms and so depending on the shape of your body so you might have the, the forearms a bit higher might feel a bit uncomfortable on the chest area so you want to bring the forearms a bit higher so they might be almost like underneath the uh, pectoral, even throat area. And you allow your weight to sink through the upper arm. So it is, it is intenser. Um, <clears throat> there's not really a quieter version of this pose. It's, it's Guru Dasana. It's the eagle pose arms. But then in a yin style. In that we're using gravity. And then we're going to see if we can stay in the pose for probably a minute or two at most. So it should bring some intense sensations into the, again, into that deltoid area, out, outer upper arm. Relaxing also the legs, 
buttocks, belly. So to come out, actually, you don't have to lift out. You can roll to one side to come up into the supine position and then roll around. I just, I don't know if you could see that. And then we'll switch the arm. So the other arm goes on top. So you want to slide the hands away from you as you come down. And resting the forehead either onto a, a cushion or a brick or the floor. Allowing this to sink down into the deeper tissue, connective tissue. Really powerful pose for the shoulders and upper back. Once you're in the pose, if you can relax, release the belly, the pelvis, the legs. Connecting with your breath. Yeah, it's not really, this, it's not going to be accessible to everybody, this pose. Uh, it's more of an advanced pose, I would say. And as I say, I can't think of a way of simplifying it really. Uh, the way to do to build it up would be to work with Guru Dasana first before you introduce this to your students. And to come out, so you can you can lift the chest and release the arms out that way, or you can roll round into supine. That also seems to work quite well. And we're going to swing up and come into a seated, supported seated position. So make sure you're gonna be warm enough now so you can put some more layers on. And, but we're gonna move into a period of meditation, okay, before we lie down. <clears throat> So, yeah, that might have been, it might be quite stimulating actually that practice, even though we are doing the shoulder stand with the support of the chair. Uh, stimulating the upper body. It's also a little bit of an adventure doing stuff over the chair, certainly if you don't do it very often, until it gets more, um, familiar, more comfortable. <clears throat> so I'd like us to come into a seated position for the last five or six minutes of the session. And I'll lead us uh, up to lying down, basically. So when I ring the bell, you can shift down to the floor. Those of you that are staying on for the meditation, the last week of the meditation course, you, you can, I think you can just leave your channel open. So I'll sign out and Salatra will sign in. So coming into a supported seated meditation pose. Feeling the body, 
hopefully that was stimulating as well as opening for the upper back and shoulders. Like to grow your spine, especially through the, the upper thoracic, uh, through the neck spine, to the crown. Enjoying any sense of space or energy in that area that we've drawn out through the yoga poses. Releasing the arms away from the shoulders. into a whole body awareness. And tuning in with any specific areas in your body that are drawing your attention. Whether that's pleasant sensations arising or or unpleasant sensations we can bathe those areas in our awareness sense of kindly awareness generous awareness Allowing the body to release as fully as it can in this moment. And then opening up to your heart center, chitta, heart mind what's happening on an emotional level, what emotions are present. Maybe there's an image there that somehow communicates a sense of your mood. traditional image for the heart mind is heart as wide as the ocean body like a mountain mind like the sky Then from here, being aware of this process or this quality that is change. It 
dynamic, there's nothing fixed. Maybe you can feel that sense of movement of energy, your emotions. So it might be more like tumultuous emotions, fiery emotions. And then we're going to anchor into the breath. For the last few moments of the session. Feeling your breath. So feel free to carry on meditating or if it's more appropriate, come down into Shavasana for a few minutes and we'll bring this session to a close. So thank you very much and do give that another go during the week. If there's any questions, do put them into the group. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.